First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. Boy, these dull markets. What are you going to do for yourself during the time when it's falling asleep? Folks, this is the chart of the Dow E-mini yesterday. I have to show you this because we had just a tiny bit of volatility. We went, folks, from 31.2 all the way down here to 31.4, Okay. That's only 800 Dow points. And then we went all the way up here to 31.12, okay? That's another nine points. That's 1,700 points. And then we had a tiny bit of a sell-off. We dropped 1,100 points. Folks, that's a 2,000-point move in the Dow Jones yesterday. Last night, I sent out a video when we were right here. And I said, there's a potential of hitting this 382 retracement. And someone called me up from uh, where was it somewhere uh, Denmark and he said there is absolutely no way that that can make a 382 and I said look any market that can go down 2,000 points can rally back to the 382 and by golly it hit it spot on and then you can see what it's done the rest of the day we've been talking about the bearishness of this for a long time Jeff Huge will be our guest today he's extremely bearish Peter Lydes will be our guest next week. Norm Winsky has been extremely bearish. Remember, Norm told us that it looked like the 12th was going to be a high. He missed it by 10 minutes. But what are you going to do with somebody from Florida moving in from Indiana? Give him a break. Social climber, that's what we call Norman. Okay, Norman's a good guy. We're going to have him on anyway. Anyway, you can see we made the ABCD pattern. It would not be unusual because this is the key day. We just passed the, the fall, uh, the autumn equinox, okay? It would not be a surprise. I know you can't believe that it could happen, but you can see an A, B, C, D move up here to the 50% level. That, that If it can do this, it can certainly do that. Look what it's hammered today. The bonds have gone into the toilet. We're going to talk about those in just a minute. But anyway, that's what we're looking at. Our original target on this, folks, is uh, down at uh, 2,700, I believe. Uh, and we're at uh, 30,000 and change right now, so we'll have to wait and see. D if you d defy human nature, do the work on the Dow Jones, do the work on the S&P and E-mini S&P, E-mini S&P, and also the Russell, and you'll see these same patterns with this wild volatility stopping right at this this high hole. This high we had here, folks, was an exact 786 of the high from uh, 31,224, which was the big ABCD. You can't make it up. All right, let's move on to a couple other ones that we need to show you. This is the one that I think is got to, you got to pay attention to this one now, folks. We've been watching it for two days, and we're watching it again today, too. Let's get it up here, and that is the old Bondolis. All I got to do is to find the old Bondolis. I've got so many charts here to show you today that uh, I, I think I've got a little confused. Uh, well, no, I'm not confused. I am just, uh, I can't find them. That's the problem. Okay, here it is. It's right there in front of me. Try looking, Larry. Okay, here was the chart from yesterday. I want to walk these through to show you where we were. We had a very strong rally after this bottom two yesterday, if you'll notice. We went all the way up to here, folks, after we finished. I'm trying to show you the, the what happened to walk through this because I believe, and I don't know why, but I think we're getting ready for one tail-kicking uh, rally in the Treasury bonds. I, I'm just looking at the charts, and I'm just a chartist. You know, I, you know, <laughs> the stuff that I look at and what other people look at, you know, are totally different. So I, I think we got to uh, pay attention to this because there's a, a slight chance that this may, uh, may or not, may or may not be happening. And here is the other bond chart. Here, this is what I wanted to bring to your attention today. Today we played a little smarter game than we did the other day. Remember, we talked about that one point. 618 expansion down here that that was the place to buy it well 
boys and girls, that was a place to buy it today at 12809. The ABCD is at 12808. Now, if you believe in things that we put in the newsletter every week, just go into the newsletter. I'm going to do it for you here because I think we should be really proud of ourselves for keeping everybody short <clears throat> for a very long time. And let me get this up here so we can show it again. This is the long-term weekly chart in the Treasury bonds. And we're going to move down to the daily and hourly chart to see where we are. There was our target, folks, 128 and change. When it was here, okay, we said that was the top. When, we, when it was here, we had the 135. We said, this is the target, and here we is, and you can't get anybody to buy it. Of all the things, I mean, I'll show you. Well, <laughs> you already know. If you're watching the TV, all you're listening to is the two-year, the 30-year, the 40-year, the 90-year, the 120-year. All that stuff is happening, yeah. But <laughs> the cat's out of the bag, folks. Interest rates are going higher, yeah. And they're probably going to go a lot higher, but before they go, they might have one heck of a rally. I don't know if they will or not, but I know at this point I don't have to risk a whole lot. Look at the Treasury notes, folks. Just to give you an example how bearish it's been. Get it up here and see these same old numbers that we use all the time. Different time frames, of course. Different tools for different fools. There's the 382 right here. There's the 382 right here. There's the 382 right here. And now we're sitting right here in a potential three drive to a bottom and a 1.27. And the notes are acting better than the bonds today. Uh, they're actually up about 10 pips from their bottom, which the bonds are the bonds are not. They're probably going to go lower, but there's a – you can see here we had a really big collapse here, okay? And then we had a really good rally, all right? And this is the worst sell-off we've had in a, quite a long time. Now, could we make the A, B, C, D? Yes, we could without any trouble at all. That's why you've got to nail it down to the point where if you're going to buy it down there at 128.10, you put your stop at 128.04 or 03 or 20 even, or 128 even, and see what happens. Because these things can go through these patterns like you can't believe. If you remember, we showed you this same pattern yesterday, uh, day, well, the day before yesterday on Tuesday, uh, in the Dow Jones E-mini. There's that same pattern. You're going to see it right here. There's the same pattern of a downtrend and hitting the 382s. That's what you're looking at. Today, same old, same old. Same tools, different fools. We were doing the same thing in natural gas. Let's just get this up here so we remind ourselves where we were uh, in the natural gas here because uh, we were talking about it. I'm showing you these because it's in, it doesn't make any difference what vehicle you're looking at. It's the one you decide you want to trade. There's your ABCD exactly at the 382. There's your 382 rally. Folks, we're way down here today. We dropped another, and we're in the midst of w almost wintertime over there, and they're having natural gas uh, shortages. Something's not right in Denmark. And here was that chart. We were looking at just one second, and we will get it right here. There it is right here. There was the one where we were. Hold on. Going through these rather quickly because I want to be – I've got so darn many of them that I think are important. But, uh, oh, folks, we're going lower. Just a question of when. There you go, folks. There's the natural gas. We'll be right back. 10 4 8 7 7 9 2 7 6 6 4 8 of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Call, call, call now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Okay, folks, uh, we, we have a guest on the line, Peter, from Park City, Utah. Peter, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing great, Larry. How are you? I'm living the dream, baby, on the green side of the grass <laughs> once again. Great. You better you better stay on that green side, my friend. I, I plan to. <laughs> hey, I truly appreciated the, uh, the webinar the other day. Um, I learned more from the bond trade than I did from anything else, and I'm just really grateful. I wanted to say thank you. And, I mean, I put – Put to work last night what you'd said. Um, you know, it was once we established the move down, um, just put the 3A2 on the S&P and on the, uh, well, the ES and the Euro. They went right to it and reversed right off at about 2 a.m. my time. And it, it's just, it is staggering when you look at it. Um, you know, are these now, would you consider this to be like, you know, small interday, like ABCD uh, down? Yes. In yeah, those, those are, markets. Those are based, that 38.2 is based on the last two hour, uh, basically a, a 60 minute chart. So that could change at any time because the volatility is so great now that you have to realize these markets can, you know, have tremendous rallies. I mean, when I sent that video out last night, which was about eight o'clock at night, and you remembered it's two in the morning that it hit. And if you didn't have your set, have your order setting there with your stop in, by the time you woke up, you know, it was 300 points lower. I mean, I, I was, uh, I said, how could it ever hit that and stop exactly to uh, every one of them? I mean, there's got to be something that these algorithmic traders are looking at that the same thing we're looking at, maybe in a different way, but it hit it spot on. But the time frame is correct. You know, that's the main thing. It, it, you're absolutely correct right. on that. You got to figure out no, what I time mean, frame you're in. Again, this, you know, at what, 10 here? So it's at, you know, at noon, whatever. Yes. Off of that, the bounce, it went up into the 3A2 again. Yes, it and did. And stopped sure in did. a track at uh, 3790. Yep. Yeah, it keeps doing it. You know, when it stops doing it, you're going to know because you're going to get stopped out. That's pretty much it. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I <laughs> getting right, back Larry, to that bond I, trade, I the more I look at this, help. the more I look at this bond and note, gee whiz, uh, we're down 13 weeks. And it's in the news all the time. And boy, if, it, if there was a market that was ready to catch fire for short covering, this would be it. But boy, it's going to be tough trying to nail this one because it's a falling safe, and you got to take nibbles at it because uh, yeah, this yeah. thing can really move yeah. around. Well, it's been 13 weeks. Next Fibonacci is 21 weeks. 
Yeah, I, that, I never thought of that. Yeah, it is 13 weeks. <laughs> well, we're over we're over the equinox too, and that that's a big cycle. That's a big cycle. Yeah. That equinox. That's a, that's been in all the Egyptian stuff and the Sumerians and Babylonians. That was covered in Andrew Lowe's book, uh, The Evolution of Technical Analysis, where he talked about the astrologers were the first technicians. The first 50 pages of that. 250 page book is related to astrology and how they were doing things with mercury and the moon and uh stuff but way back you know five six seven thousand years ago which uh i wasn't trading then were you peter i don't remember if i saw you in the pits at those days no no (laughs) have you got any snow yet oh god no we're warm we're we're yeah i know you are yeah yeah we're like you know 75 yeah, it's oh, nice. Yeah, you know, well, that's pretty nice. But that is that is definitely paradise up there. That's for sure. I have to come up and see you one yeah. of these days. Oh, absolutely. The upper yeah. the upper Uintas picked up snow about a week ago, but you know it's upwards of eleven, twelve thousand feet. So nothing where okay. we are. Uh, but it's supposed to be you know thirties the next next few nights. So it's, oh, well, getting, it's there. getting it's getting there. Listen, thanks for calling in. I appreciate the comments. I'll put that $20 bill in the mail to you as soon as I find one that'll come in first, second, or third at Belmont this week, and we'll be on our way. Sounds good. Look forward to okay. the, the webinar. Okay. Thank you, you Pedro. Buddy. Take it easy and keep the uh, on the green side of that grass, buddy. Absolutely. You as okay. well. Have a great you day, bet. Larry. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Okay, folks, we're going to take a trip now. We're going to go across to where they had the big funeral this week over to Great Britain, and we're going to take a look at the British pound. This is a monthly chart, folks. We've had this on our watch list for a very, very long time because we've been extremely bearish. We hit a 112 handle today, folks. You can see that the target is at 85. That was the target in 1986, in January of 86. I was in Pismo Beach, California with Byron Tucker, Eddie Horowitz, Rich Anderson, and Robert St. John, and Mark Douglas. And we were having a huge uh, New Year's Eve party and fishing party. Never went on that one, but they were out fishing for salmon. And on that Monday, Sunday night, early Monday morning, the British pound hit 85. And that was the low of the British pound for, whoa, many years. And it looks like it's going to be revisited very, very quickly. As you can see on this monthly chart, this is no different than that chart we're looking at in the Treasury bonds and Treasury notes, folks. There's your 85 right there. There's your shorter-term pattern right here. And so be very, very careful. The dollar is strengthening. It's not weakening. And that's an important thing to remember. Now, someone asked me a question. What was the strongest of all the uh, all the things that are out there, okay? Now, there are two of them. First, I'm going to show you one that you're not going to believe this one because I didn't think it even, even had any uh, chance of being one of the stronger ones, and you'll never guess what it is, folks. It's the Ruskies. It's the Russian ruble. Look, when they invaded Ukraine, the thing falls out of bed. Look at it. Sanctions working? Duh, I think not. You know, anyway, that's what's happening with the Russian ruble. But there's one that is even... Far weaker or stronger, let's see, weaker than against the dollar, and that is the uh, Turkish lira. And I want to get this up here and show you this on a long-term monthly chart because we have friends uh, over in Istanbul and Ankara, and uh, they have been hit with inflation that is, uh, you know, off the charts, 70, 80 percent. But you can see there's a Turkish lira compared to the U.S. dollar. Son of a gun. That's a a really big monster. So those are some of the other ones that we look at. I only follow the major cross rates, but those are the ones that I think are very, very important. Getting back to one of the trades we were looking at yesterday, which was the crude oil, and we want to get that up to show you what happened to it yesterday because we had a another really nice 382 that uh, went down into new low. There was the 382 right here. We dropped $2,000. Guess what we do? We rallied $4,000 right up to the 78% level. Look at that beautiful A, B, C, D, and we're way down in here right now, folks. So uh, this thing uh, also uh, worked pretty good. All of them worked today. There was none of them that didn't uh, that didn't work, but uh, that's neither here nor there. So we're going to have Jeff Huge on in just a few minutes, and then tomorrow we have uh, uh, Norm Winsky, and then next week we will have... Uh, Peter Elides, Shane Smolian, uh, Stan Harley, and Tim Boston. And those will be our guests next week. 
And uh, that'll all be. And the reason why I'm bringing them back, folks, is where it's we're at real critical levels of the market, and they've been telling us about these days and the price swings and everything, and all of it's really good. And you know, you can't expect any more than that. So that's what we're going to be watching here as we look at some of these things. So we're going to be. Uh, I think we've got how much time we got to the break here. Probably uh, just 30 seconds. We're on our way. We'll be back with a Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights, folks. So stay with us, please. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, <laughs> okay. I think we have Jeff Huge Alpha Insights on the line. Jeff, are you there? I am here, Larry. How are you? I am good. I had to rush to let Carlos in. Today's the day he comes to wash the car. Hey, listen, I posted your chart. A bear market rally has peaked, but that was a long time ago, and I do believe you still think you we peaked up in here. No rally imminent. I think you're absolutely correct. I think August 16th was the best-selling opportunity we're going to see for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to talk about the first chart, about the interest rates, because we were talking about that today. 
that interest rates. I've never seen so much news in Bloomberg, CNBC, uh, what's the other one, CNN, all of them are all talking about interest rates and everything. Boy, they certainly have a whole bunch of people, but we've broken a long-term downtrend line, haven't we? Uh, we certainly have, and that's a 40-year downtrend line. And so, yeah. you know, from our work, Larry, um, we don't see much in the way of resistance between um, now and really 5%. There's a little bit above 4, 4.5%, but you know, we're at 4, 412, 413 right now. Um, it, it's not going to take much to push up through that 45 to 5% level, and then it's 6%. So we yeah. really just don't have a ton of resistance between now and those levels. Well, that that is, in fact, the understatement of the year. Now, the next chart we have is about volatility. I don't think anybody could argue about volatility is increasing in spades, it looks like. We see a very large degree reversal pattern in, in place. And Larry, I'm sure you already talked about this, but you know what day it is today, right? Yep, equinox, you bet, starting a That's fall. That's right. It's, it's the autumnal equinox, and as Paul McCray Montgomery dubbed it, it's the date that will live in infamy, the most important market day of the year. And because that is the date that many, many indexes experience major cycle turns. And it's our view that we're going to see a major cycle turn in volatility to the upside. We haven't printed um, a VIX level above 40% in almost two years. And my suspicion is once we see a break in equities to new lows, we could see volatility spike substantially above 40% and well above 50% potentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can certainly see that for sure. That's just amazing. And, and I'll tell you, even uh, even in the news, you go to uh, Ace Hardware, and I heard one of the guys talking about he was going to buy a house, and the, the mortgage rate that he was looking at a couple of months ago was uh, 3%. Now it's double, and he can't buy the house. <laughs> so it's yeah. not, a, not a good thing. Now the next chart we have is about market breadth. And uh, mm -hmm. I don't follow this too much. You want to tell the folks uh, what you're looking at here, please? Sure. And then I'll just say also with respect to that volatility chart, you know, there just hasn't been any fear in the market. And what we're starting to see, and it's showing up in the breadth indicators, um, is, is some semblance of capitulation here where, where the fear is starting to kick in. We've kind of talked about breadth in the, in the context of the three little pigs. You know, there's a house of straw, a house of twigs, and a house of bricks. At the bottom is the advanced <laughs> decline, the, cumul the cumulative advanced decline line for the NASDAQ. And, and we mm -hmm. call that a house of straw. It's the weakest secondary star stocks available in the market, about 3,300 stocks. Um, you know, we only know the big ones like Apple and Microsoft and Google, right? But there's many, mm -hmm. many names in that index that just, you know, are so inconsequential. And they're just, you know, they're, mm -hmm. they're really flagging at this point. In the middle, we've got... The NYSE cumulative advanced decline line, and that's a little bit better. We call it a house of twigs, right? You know, it's, it's not straw. It's, it's not, you know, uh, chaff, so to speak. They're decent companies, but, you know, there, there are also a lot of secondary companies in that index, as well as bond proxies and preferred stocks. And then at mm -hmm. the top, we have the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is more like a house of bricks. It's the 500 best companies in the United States of America, which is the best market in the world and the best country in the world. And so mm -hmm. we think about, you know, strength of stocks expanding, right? You know, the number of stocks in that index that are, that are um, in, in um, where advances, where they're advancing uh, relative to declining. And what we're seeing here is that net advancers have been breaking down to new lows, both in the house of straw and the house of twigs, where we would expect it, but mm -hmm. also in the house of bricks. And that is concerning. Yeah, it speaks You're, to a much narrower market and uh, a narrowing market, and that that means basically the infantry is uh, running away and leaving the generals uh, to stand alone in the in the line of fire. You know, Jeff, I was really surprised yesterday when the Fed was out there that people don't realize this, but we had over a two thousand point move in the Dow Jones. We went down six, up seven, and down thirteen. I mean, people yeah. didn't even see the volatility in that until you pointed out to them, because we actually made substantially new highs after making substantially new lows. 
ending up with yeah. a huge outside day to the downside, which is incredibly bearish, as you pointed out in that very first chart, you know, uh, six weeks ago when we had one of those things. That's right. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I think that there's no question there are new lows looming ahead based on the price mm -hmm. action that we've seen thus far off the, um, you know, the January 4th high, which we've kind of deemed to be, you know, a cycle uh, termination of a cycle wave advance and possibly a super cycle wave advance. You know, we saw this kickback rally into the August 19th high, and that was basically an ABC rally as we mm -hmm. think about it in Elliott terms. It was primary wave two. And then we declined into that early September, September 6th low and rallied out of that in three waves as well. And that's intermediate wave one and two. And we are now in intermediate wave three down of primary wave three down and, and actually minor wave three down as we speak. And so we've got a third of a third of a third wave decline, which is, you know, a very powerful bearish setup. Mm -hmm. It's very similar to what we saw in 1987. Oh, yeah, I remember 1987 quite well. Uh, someone's asking the question here, uh, Jeff, is what is your, uh, your say, into the uh, October, November period, what is your price objective for the S&P 500? I think the S&P 500 can probably trade as low as 2750 by October 25th to November 8th, but that would only be primary wave three low. We look for kind of a lateral consolidation after that, and then a breakdown to lower lows in the first quarter. So when do you see this bear market ending? Do you have any projections on that? That was a second question the gentleman asked. Yeah, um, I think potentially in 2024. Mm -hmm. Wow. You don't have the, the date and the exact time of that yet, do you? I'll, I'll report it to you first, <laughs> I guarantee it. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> we have to uh, take a break to pay a few bills here for TFNN, but we'll be right back with uh, Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights with all of his great information that he's been giving us over the past few months that kept us short, and uh, hopefully we'll be seeing more to the downside. But this is going to lead to a great buying opportunity in the future, Jeff. You know that as well as I do. Absolutely. We'll be right back, folks, with Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks, speaking with Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights, and he has the preferred Elliott Wave count. Jeff, I would prefer the Jeff Huge count, but if whatever you like to talk <laughs> about is fine with me. Go you know, right ahead, um, we, we, we've made our bones as uh, being superior Elliotticians over the years, and, um, you know, people want to know what we think about, you know, making a forecast for the market. So we use Elliott Wave as kind of a roadmap for that. And, and as I said a minute ago, I, I think that the January 4th top marked the end of a cycle wave advance off the March 2009 low. That was a Fibonacci 13-year advance, and that peaked at 48.18. That may have also ended super cycle wave three, which is a 90-year advance off the uh, 1932 low. What we've seen so far to the downside into the June lows is primary wave one of cycle wave A, and cycle wave A will be the first wave of decline. That should be followed by, you know, a counter trend move, a B wave, uh, which may retrace 50% of the decline off that January 4th high. And then we'll see a C wave to the downside, which could you know, take out the March 2009 lows uh -huh. potentially. Um, certainly it would get a little support there. But, you know, our contention at this point is that we should focus first on wave A down before we start thinking about the rest of the pattern. And so our thinking, as I mentioned a minute ago, is that primary wave three could bottom around the 50% retracement, which is around 2750 we should see a bit of a reprieve from the selling there, maybe a lateral consolidation, but it should be relatively shallow. And then we would expect the final plunge to the downside to retrace a total of 61.8% of that entire advance off the 2009 low. That would bring us down to S&P 2250, which is about the 200-month uh, moving average roughly, as well mm -hmm. as a previous fourth wave extreme low yeah. in that last advance, which are all very common sort of support areas. So, you know, we think there's a real good shot that we could see that 2250 by Q1 next year. Okay, Jeff, uh, one of our listeners just asked if you would repeat the dates of those cycle lows you were looking at. It was in October, November period. Is that correct? That's right. Um, October 25th is the first, and November okay. 8th, which is actually election day, is the second. Uh, oh, also we're keep in have mind an that election. the next. Oh. Yeah. I haven't also seen anything in the news about that, that so. <laughs> There's also a uh, FOMC meeting on November 2nd. So that's kind of a window that mm. October 25th to November 8th, where I think the market could see, you know, initial bottom, then a more extreme low. And then probably blast off after the election would be my suspicion uh, that we'll get kind of a big counter trend bounce into year end before we get that final plunge, which uh, could come as early as, say, January of next year. Well, now when the next is a stock of Hostess brands, and I believe that's Twinkies, isn't it? That is Twinkies. The you know, I remember is. that. I remember a news thing from many, many years ago where a Japanese uh, – 
uh, had surrendered in on uh, Hiroshima to 35 years later, and he still had Hostess Twinkies that were still that he was still eating to that day, and they were fresh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I I, I put it as a, a food inflation play, really. Um, yeah. You know, everybody's uh, you know thinks that in a bear market you can't make money. Uh, in stocks, and, and there actually are opportunities from time to time. And, and Hostess brand symbol TWNK uh, is one of those. It actually made a new all-time record high yesterday, um, a new high this week. Mm-hmm. And my suspicion is that this breakout from this kind of small lateral base, you know, we we would call it kind of an inverted head and shoulders base. Uh, that breakout counts to twenty nine fifty. And we're using a pretty tight stop at around $23, so there's a 4-to-1 positive risk skew there. We think this is a really interesting way to um, pair off your hedges. So if you've got some shorts, you should have some longs to balance it out. And this is one where we have very high relative strength, uh, very strong momentum, and new all-time highs in a raging bear market. Uh, It should not be ignored. Well, we have a, one of our listeners uh, just asked the appropriate question about how you've been doing lately. So I put your portfolio performance update there. You want to tell the folks uh, what they're looking at here. You should be very proud of this, my friend. That's really yeah, absolutely. It's, Thanks. I appreciate that. Um, you know, so we get asked a lot. Well, you know, you're been, you've been pretty bearish. What are you doing in your own portfolio? And so, you know, on the long side, we actually created this strategy called Alpha Insights Idea Generator Lab for our institutional clients. And and we have an opportunity for our newsletter subscribers to subscribe to this as well. But we publish a new idea every Wednesday afternoon, and it's a long-only idea. And, um, you know, we've, we've actually, over the last 310 days since we launched the project, we're up almost 20% while the market's down almost 20%. About a third of our ideas are winners. About a third we close flat. About a third are modest losers. Our average loss is about five and 5.3%. Average wins about 17%. You can see the last 10 trades that we closed out on the right-hand side. And, you know, the winners are up. 28, 31, 38 percent. The losers are down seven, nine, uh, two, five, uh, or flat. You know, and so you know we close a lot of them out flat because uh, we just get stopped out. We keep moving our stop loss up. Uh, but you know, this gives you a good sense of how our trading strategy works. It's a uh, um, it's basically a technical strategy, a systematic trading strategy. We've run it for years, and we tend to have. Um, you know, a win rate of about 30, 33% or so in bear markets, about 50% in bull markets. And we tend to have a, a profit factor of about three to one. So, um, you know, this past year's performance is right in line with our long term historic strategies uh, performance. Very good. Now, just I'm going to give you just a tiny bit of advice from a sage old cowboy, and that is you can improve your performance a great deal, Jeff, if you don't take the losing trades. <laughs> you know, well, Absolutely. this is what Warren, yeah, Warren Buffett had two rules. One, don't lose money. Number two, don't violate rule number one. So don't take the losing <laughs> trades and that'll increase. <laughs> Easier said so, than done, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. In these markets like this, oh, my gosh. I, well, I, I could tell a story about uh, what was happening in some of these markets uh a little while ago, uh, we've got uh, uh, you've got a new a free newsletter that I think the folks would like to hear about. Let me get this up to uh, take a quick yeah. look at it, and then we'll uh, move on to the next one here, and sure. you'll see so, here's where we are. So tell us about that, so, uh, Jeff. Yeah, Larry, I publish this newsletter every month. It's usually the first Saturday of the month that it comes out. It's uh, absolutely free to subscribe. You can go to my website, jwhinvestment.com. There's a spot at the top where it says newsletter. You click on that and subscribe. You'll, you'll see this sort of a page uh, pop up right away, and there's a box you put your email in, address in. But, you know, we cover all the real big picture sort of things. In fact, we, we've entitled it Huge Insights Effectively, and, and it's all a big picture strategy. And, you know, a lot of times we get emails from some of our 5,000 plus subscribers saying, okay, this is really great insight, Jeff, but how do I invest? And so we've got this optional member, um, you know, uh, upgrade for $10 a month. And, and if you do upgrade, 
And you get actually that Idea Generator Lab publication that we put out every Wednesday. So you get a list of our ideas and how you can actually invest. Hey, listen, my friend, thanks for joining us. We'll have you on again soon and keep up the great work. And I'll post how the folks can reach you, okay? Always a pleasure, Larry. Thanks a lot. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks. This is the chart of the E-mini S&P that we've been following for quite some time. There was the top we were looking at on January the 4th. You notice that the break that we had here during COVID a couple of years ago, that was exactly equal to the first break that we had here. And if you take that red line and add it to this one, that takes us to 31.75. That's where I think we're going on this down move sometime between September now and October 31st to November the 8th, somewhere in that ballpark. And then we're going to see where it goes. We're in a long-term bear market, folks. Get ready. Learn how to play these 382s, and it'll do, you, it'll do you good. It really will. But anyway, that's what we're paying attention to here is this level right here. We're a long way away, you see, from the uh, level we're actually setting in right about here. Once we get below here, I think if you got to be really careful in here because of this equinox that we have right now. And we have Mercury perihelion. Remember, Norm told us about that. Tim Bost yelled and screamed about it and said be, be get ready for acceleration to the downside on the 21st to 22nd of September 
And you see what's happened to the 21st and 22nd of September. And he said that will continue on into early October. So uh, don't try to be a home run hitter. You know, be like Pete Rose, make a million dollars hitting singles. Anyway, that's what we're watching here on a longer term basis. Now, tomorrow, uh, our guest will be Norm Winsky. We'll be able to put his feet to the fire again to see what he's going to tell us. He nailed that high on the 12th of September, and so we've got him back. And, of course, we've told Norm, the first time you give us a losing trade, Norm, your history, you'll be a mystery. But he'll be with us tomorrow. Next week, we've got Peter Lighty, Shane Smolian, Tim Bost, and uh, Stan Harley will be our guest, reviewing everything that's going on in these wild and woolly markets. So we'll see you on the flip side tomorrow. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless.